I began the new year in a fog. Uh, I was low and even uh, good things felt flat for me. I uh, hope seemed an empty word. And, and this is a new experience for me. Uh, I've been gifted by God with an overly optimistic look on life. Uh, but after Christmas, I was empty, uh, despite all the signs of hope all around me that I couldn't uh, deny. Uh, and Tori d uh, suggested that we might do a, a Daniel fast, a, a kind of vegan fast without wine and, and processed food or bread or any of the good things. Uh, and that we might pray. Uh, praying and fasting as a spiritual discipline is hard work, but it's made a huge difference uh, to us together at the beginning of this year. It's totally helped us to reconnect and to find our feet again at the beginning of the, of the year and to rediscover a vision for our lives and for our work and for our city. Uh, it's been such a rich learning time for us both. Uh, I'm so grateful to see things shift. Uh, uh, I felt hope rise over the last few weeks to see God change things and answer our prayers, to see people stepping into faith to see important but difficult conversations bring things to a head so that things could change and to begin to feel a new clarity about the way forward in almost every aspect of our lives in our home our family church work health relationships uh, as a deanery of 21 uh, benefices we we share an exciting and life-giving vision for the anglican church here in bath and the surrounding villages we want to see god at work in every community drawing people to himself and becoming disciples, completely surrendering their lives to his will, finding peace, uh, forgiveness, healing and freedom, uh, turning away from sin and turning towards Jesus, seeking the kingdom of, kingdom of God first, uh, before and above everything else, selling everything so that they can buy the field with the treasury. And we want to see hundreds of people discover life in Christ over the next few years and hundreds more rediscover it all over again and being re-energised by the Spirit to live lives of purpose and meaning in the Kingdom of God. We want to see everyone living as a disciple in our churches and every disciple, every single one of us, equipped and encouraged and released into mission on their front lines. Uh, in the world but not of it. We want to see a new wave of ordinary believers rediscovering their calling to be carriers of the message of Christ and feeling confident and excited about sharing this message with their friends and neighbours and their colleagues and acquaintances. Uh, we want to see an explosion of invitations and conversations and testimony right across the city and the wider region as ordinary members learn once again what it is to live and tell the story of God in their lives. We want to see a harvest being gathered in. Uh, Jesus told his disciples that the harvest was ready for reaping and we are praying for more harvesters to be sent out into every community in our deanery so that heaven will break out in joy as sinners repent and believe again and again and again. As families are transformed, as relationships are healed, as businesses are reordered in line with the kingdom and rule of God and our whole city is transformed one life at a time. We have a, an amazing vision for everyone to be a disciple, everyone to be a disciple maker, every church to be a discipleship community, and everywhere to be places of discipleship invitation. We long to see and are praying for hundreds of people to step into the kingdom of God, to be baptized into Christ and into his life and into his spirit, and to confess their sin and find forgiveness and become truly fruitful in every part of the life of this city carrying God's presence into every part of the city, being presence carriers rather than burden bearers. I believe that God is leading us into deeper unity together, unity of message and unity of mission. Uh, he's inviting us to prioritise mission and evangelism over and above all other, uh, over and above all other kinds of things and many other things that we're committed to. He's calling us deeper into prayer, alone in our own prayer closets and together in houses of prayer right across the city. I believe that he's calling us to plant new churches into new areas, new demographics, new people groups, and to take risks in investing significant resources into mission to the poorest areas of the city, which have traditionally been the hardest places of mission in church life. I believe he's recalling us uh, to refocus our work and our effort, uh, to let some things go, for the sake of new things, new missions and new work. I believe that he's calling the grandparents 
among us to help create a church for the next generations beneath us. Uh, I believe he's asking us to let go of the reins and to offer our wisdom and care to new, younger leaders who will be able to create a church for a new generation of people across our city. I also believe that we're close to a tipping point, a point where we will see new energy and freshness in our personal discipleship and relationship with God, a point uh, when our worship in its rich variety across the area will be refreshed and reinvigorated and renewed, a point when we will find new energy and life from investing in prayer together, a point when we will rediscover a purpose as believers, as rescued and forgiven people of God, to be carriers and evangelists of this wonderful story, this treasure within. In, in all this, I am not unaware of the challenges we face. Pride, jealousy, fear, judgment and prejudice could all get in the way and we need to renounce them whenever we find them rising up in ourselves or between us. We need to create a deeper culture of trust between us, a culture of listening and caring, of challenge and support. We need, uh, we need to build our relationships. Uh, we live in a turbulent time, culturally, morally, economically and socially. We're all caught up in working out how to respond to the dramatic change in views on sexual ethics, for example, in our culture and in our church. And these issues are bound to stretch our theology, our relationships, our unity, and our view of mission, perhaps even to breaking point. We won't be able to avoid travelling this road together. It's affecting every single one of us, every family. Now is the time for us to cry out to God for help and for wisdom and for truth. Of course, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We may be hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. We may be perplexed but we will not succumb to despair. We may be persecuted, but we will not be abandoned. We may even be struck down, but we will not be destroyed. Jesus is Lord. He is reigning until all things have been placed under his feet. His name is above all names. He is the king above all kings. We have nothing to fear. And perfect love will lead us and drive it out. So let us, at the beginning of this new season of change, in our deanery, in our city, in our nation, in our diocese, and in our lives, be faithful to God, the creator of all things, seen and unseen. Let us remain steadfast in the teaching we have received from our ancestors and in the word of God. Let us recommit ourselves to prayer, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to the apostles' teaching. And let us seek first the kingdom of God in all that we are and all that we do. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through in the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we may have hope. And finally, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give us all the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus has, so that with one mind and with one voice, we may glorify the God and Father of the one Lord Jesus Christ as one church, one body in this city that ultimately belongs to him.